We're talking about the effect of sin. And sin has a an apparent effect and a hidden effect. And the Shaykh, he mentioned something amazing. He says, وَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي الْمَعْصِيَةِ إِلَّا تَبَدُّلُ الْإِسْمِ فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا كُنْتَ طَائِعْ تُسَمَّى بِالْمُحْسِنِ الْمُقْبِلِ وَإِذَا كُنْتَ عَاصِيًا إِنْتَقَلَ إِسْمُكَ إِلَى الْمُسِيءَ الْمُعْرِضِ He says that for sin, if there was no effect of sin, apart from the name given to you, that would have been enough. And if for good deeds there was no reward apart from the change of name, that would have been enough as a reward. So even in today's age, if someone says to you, Oh sinner, come here. Nobody would like to be called by this laqab of gunagar. Nobody would like to be called a sinner. In a similar manner, can you imagine if a person is unable to bear being called a sinner, imagine the effects of that name. So the Shaykh is saying that our bodies, our faces, our egos are unable to take someone calling us sinner. But this is just a change in name. But with sin comes the effect of sin. So with sin, you are now a sinner, but you also have the effect of sin. You are not willing to accept someone calling you a sinner. So how can you be willing to accept the effect of sin? Which is the hardness of the heart. <clears throat> and then he says a person should constantly make dua. Allahumma nqulni min dhullil ma'asiyah ila izzi ta'ah. That, oh Allah, take me out of the disgrace of sin to the izzat of obedience. Now, if a person was to truly understand this dua, then his life would change. That in sin, there is disgrace. And in Allah's obedience, there is it. This is something we have to program in our minds. Like the brothers in the noble effort of Dawud and Tabliq, may Allah ta'ala flourish this effort throughout the world. They always say that whatever thing is repeated, this thing becomes firm in the heart. So this is something that we need to repeat in our hearts. And make firm in our hearts. That in the disobedience of Allah is, is zillat and in the obedience of Allah, Allah Ta'ala there is izzah. <clears throat> and then the Shaykh mentions that, ma yukhaf alik, that the thing I fear for you the most is muhaqqarat al is the minor sins. You know, someone asked a question, Morna, is this allowed? Shisha is allowed. And the Morna will say it's makru. Because to class something as haram in Hanafi fiqh, you need qati'at thubut wa qati'at dalala. You need clear, clear evidence with clear cut it being mentioned. So the alim will say, oh, it's makru tahrimi, which in essence means haram. But the, the, the usage will be makru tahrimi. So the person will still say, oh, it's only makru. This is muhaqqat al zunub. The person considers sins to be insignificant. And that's why. Uh, they say regarding the Salaf and us that when we commit sins, we consider them like flies on our nose. That we just move away and it's gone. But the Salaf of the past, they considered sins like mountains on top of their heads. <coughs> and that's why they say that don't look at the sin, but look at the one you're disobeying. So when a person has this in mind, that even a minor sin is disobedience to Allah, a person will not look at the sin itself, but the one whom you are disobeying. So he says that the thing that I fear is minor sins. Why? That when it comes to major sins, sharab, zina, tark salah, these things are major sins. And it's likely that you'll turn away from them. Okay, Morna, I'm involved in drugs. I need to do toba. So you've seen it as a major sin, you're going to repent. But minor sins, you brush it off. So you don't think of repenting for minor sins. And he says the example of this is a person who he finds a lion and he escapes from a lion, but then he ends up surrounded by 50 wolves. So the lion is the example of major sin. You've escaped, don't toba. 
but you've come to the 50 wolves. You've been surrounded by your 50 or 60 minor sins. The same thing is going to happen to you here. The lion would have, would have destroyed you, killed you, and the wolves are going to kill you as well. And then he says that وَالصَّغِيرَةُ كَالشَّرَارَ مِنَ النَّارَ Allahu Akbar وَالشَّرَارَ قَدْ تُحْرَقْ بَلَدَدًا He says the example of a minor sin is the example of a spark. Spark. SubhanAllah, I came to mind that in the Quran, when Allah talks about Jahannam, Allah Ta'ala says, Qal Qasr. That the sparks of Jahannam, just the sparks, the sparks of Jahannam are the sizes of palaces. So Allah mentioned, if this is the size of a spark of Jahannam, one can imagine how, how big the flame of Jahannam is. So the Shaykh, he mentions that the minor sin is like a spark. And then he says, a spark is, is able to burn a whole city. A city is burned from the beginning of a spark. So the, the khulasa of the uh, Shaykh's message is a person should be, be careful of minor sins, not consider them insignificant. And if we all were to look inside ourselves today, we would come to the conclusion that all of us are involved in many minor sins, but because we consider them minor, and we've done this tafriqah, and this is a major sin and this is a minor sin, because we've made a distinction, so we try and stay away from the major sins, but when it comes to the minor sins, we pay no attention. And the shaykh, he gives another example. He says, كَمَنْ خَلَّفَ لَهُ أَبُوهُ أَلْفَ دِينَارْ فَاشْتَرَى بِهَا حَيَّاتٍ وَعَقَارِبٍ وَجَعَلَا حَوْلَهُ تَلْدَغْهُ هَذِي مَرَّةٍ وَتَلْعَسُهُ هَذِي أُخْرَى أَفَمَا تَقْتُلُهُ He says the example of minor sins. Your father leaves you a thousand pounds in inheritance and with that you buy some, you buy some snakes and scorpions. And he says you, you buy a hundred snakes and scorpions and one moment one snake is biting you and the other moment another scorpion is biting you. At the end of the day they're, they're going to kill you. This is the example of the minor sins. That they're going to destroy your spirituality. So a person should be careful also about minor sins. <clears throat> and then he says, Majlis of Hikmah. Nafhatun min nafhat al jannah. That the Majlis of the Hikmah of Ulama of Ilm, it is a moment from the moments of Jannah. Tajiduha fi tariqik wa fi darik wa fi baytik fara yafutka al Majlis wa lo kunta ala ma'asiyah. This is a very important point. When a person gets involved in sin, he feels to himself that I can't frequent the gatherings of ulama. Megunagaru. Like one of my friends, I encouraged him to go for Umrah. So he said to me, Marana, look, I know when I come back, I'm going to be the same. So what is the benefit of So I said, come as come, what will happen in the past, will be And maybe Allah will give you that. So some people think that I'm a sinner, why should I attend the gathering of the ulama? I'm going to, you know, I can't, you know, I, I can't stop the sin. The Shaykh he mentions, عَلَى الرَّامِ أَنْ يَرْمِي فَإِنْ لَمْ يَأْخُذِ الْيَوْمْ يَأْخُذَ دِنْ The purpose, my friends, of visiting the gathering of the ulama is that uski barkat se Allah Ta'ala removes the sin from you. And that's why I say to all the youth who are in touch with me, that if you want to stay firm on deen after Ramadan, the best way is to choose the sahabat of ulama. The Quran commands us, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ That if we attach ourselves to the ulama, through the barakat of their company, Allah Ta'ala will give us chutkara from our guna. So he says, that don't leave the gathering of ulama just because you are a sinner. He says, it's the job of the archer to, throw, to release the arrow. He may not hit his target today, but he'll hit it tomorrow. So today, you may not be able to stop yourself from sin. But keep going to the gathering of ulama and a day will come that through the barakat of the gathering of ulama Allah Ta'ala will take the sin away from you. Allah Akbar. And then the Shaykh mentions I will finish here <coughs> that guna al ma'asiya sababun li tawakkufi rizq that many a times guna is the means of 
sustenance being stopped from you. That the risk was coming your way, you committed sin, and Allah Ta'ala withholds that risk from you. This is the direct effect of guna. <clears throat> and then he says, وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرُ مَا يُخَافْ عَلَيْكَ سُوءُ الْخَاتِمَةِ وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى That one of the major fears of sin is it's feared that you will die a bad death. سُوءِ الْخَاتِمَة And the scholars have written a few reasons why a person dies without kalima. Now today we think, I'm a Muslim, when I'm going to pass away, I'll pray the kalima, no problem. Lakin, my friends, this is not the case. That sometimes, because of our sins, a person is deprived of the kalima at the time of death. Many of you heard the story of Alqama, radiallahu anh. Some of you may have heard that there was a sahabi, that he was unable to read the kalima at the time of death. Now, just to clarify, the scholars have written that this story is a fabrication. Unfortunately, many of our speakers, they quote this story. And one of the main reasons why the ulama have classed it as a fabrication because yes, sahabi ko zayb ni deta ke at the time of death he can't read the kalima. Koi sahabi ho and he's not able to read the kalima. This is not munasib for the, the maqam of sahabiyat. But all, many of our speakers, they quote the story. You can say, par hai is gana chali. Like ulama have still written that one cause of not being able to read the kalima at the time of death is disobedience to your parents. Number two, and this is Allah Ta'ala forgive us, but sins in private. So it's very easy for us to come to the masjid and lead pious lives. Again, what do we do when nobody, only Allah is watching us? Now sometimes a person thinks that, okay, I'll commit a sin in private. Meri izzat bat jayegi. But ulama mentioned, at that time, at that time, you have placed the eyes of people and the sight of people you have given that a higher maqam than the sight of Allah. Because at that time you know only Allah is watching you. But you are happy to commit sin. But if people are watching you, you can't commit sin because based you will So the, what people think of you has a higher maqam in your eyes than your station in, in Allah's sight. And another thing my friends, I want to finish. A couple of days, some time ago I was conducting a nikah. And after I, I conducted the nikah, I was sat around. They asked me to stay. I must have stay. Have some food. So, after the nikah, as is common in some people, uh, ulama became target. Ke molvi log jo hai, uh, they don't teach us the meaning of the Quran. Hame Quran se rokte hain, molvi log. So, I have to say that, in our masjid, every Friday we have the Quran. Mufti Shafi Sahib has written Ma'ayf al-Quran for, for the awam. But what I want to say is that ulama have written also that one cause of su'i khatima is be'adbi ulama. And after he said this, I got up and left. Because unfortunately in certain parts of our community, ulama are like an easy target. In every gathering, you want to say to ulama ko tanqid bina le. Tanqid and kashin inko bina le. Ulama are doing this, ulama are stopping us from Quran meaning, ulama are doing this. I koshish ki samjani ki. Lekin, we should not make ulama a nishana of, of our attacks. Allah and His Rasul islam have given them a maqam. And rather, Hakim al Ummad Ma Thani has written that uh, a person who disrespects ulama. To disrespect ulama ye kufar nahi hai. Lekin jis ne kiya wo iman ke bagayar mamare ga. Who is saying this? Hakim al-Ummat Mujadid al-Milad Mawlana Ashwa Al-Thanwi. The Mujadid of the last century. Imam Rabbani Mawlana Gangohi sahab would say ki I challenge you that those people who disrespected the ulama open their graves and you'll find because when you bury somebody you face his, his face was a qibla. So he would say that, I challenge you, open the graves of those who disrespect ulama and you'll find their face has been turned away from the Qibla. So my friends, ulama have a great maqam in the sight of shariat. So don't make them the, uh, uh, an easy target of in your gatherings. Okay? Just slander them and they don't teach Quran and they stop us from understanding the Quran and all these things. It's possible that we have a personal difference with the alim 
لیکن اللہ تعالیٰ حضگی انہیں مقام دس وائی دی سینئر دعوت تبلیغ یوٹ سے کہ وین یو ہیو اے قرآن اینڈ اٹس ٹھون تھوڑا شہید ہو گیا ہے اٹس ٹھون اور ایون اے مس پرنٹ قرآن مس پرنٹ اٹس مس پرنٹڈ لیکن پھر بھی اس کو احترام دکھانا ہے یو اسٹل ہیو ٹو شو اٹ رسپیکٹ بیکاز اس قرآن سو این عالم ایون اف ہی ہیز پرسنل فالس دیکھنا نہیں ہے وہ پھر بھی عالم ہے تو فرینڈز دے آز میری نسوس ان قرآن اینڈ سننا وچ ٹاک ٹو از اباؤٹ ہیونگ جوری گرف علامہ اینڈ دس از ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ ایون وین وی سم ٹائمس دے از اے نیڈ ٹو کریکٹ این عالم سم ٹائمس یو نو بٹ ای مسٹ بی ڈن ان اپروپیا مانا آئی گیو ایگزامپل کلوز ان دس دے از اے دعا ان 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 دا سننا اللہ اصلح بنات المؤمنین او اللہ ریکٹیفائی دی ڈاٹرز آف دس آف دا مسلمس تو مائی استاد ہی ووڈ ریڈ دا عربک ان کریکٹ سو ہی ووڈ ریڈ اللہ اصلح بنات المؤمنین از بنات از بنات این آئی واز ان دا فرسٹ ایئر آف نحوا تو ظاہر ہے جذبات بھی تھے اور آئی ہیڈ جسٹ لرن عربک ڈرامہ تو از ویری فریش بٹ ہیز مائی استاد از ویل تو آئی وینٹ ٹو ایم آفٹر آفٹر صلاح آئی سیڈ حضرت آئی کم ٹو آسٹ یور کویشچن مجھے یہ بات سمجھ نہیں آ رہی از اٹ اللہ اصلح بنات المؤمن اللہ اصلح بنات ال آئی نیو سیٹ ایم یور رونگ سر کائی صاحب مجھے یہ بات سمجھ نہیں آ رہی تو دس از دا وے ٹو حالانکہ دس شوڈ بی دا وے وی کریکٹ اینی ون کبر ویکس گو سم ینگسٹرز کیم ٹو دس ٹاک تو ون دم سر دا بک ان دا فون تو ہی کیم مصافہ ود می I said I was in I was in Bradford a couple of weeks ago I was doing Bayan youngsters and they were with their feet out and on their phones the four and, some, and I said look I made an elan of the Bayan that they can you know try and pay attention try not to be on your phones so that youngster four and something what are you talking about me so I said look look at how I've corrected you I've not made you feel bad I've not put you in a position but I've still got my, my message across to you this is how we should correct anyone not just an alim anyone and that's why it's narrated by, about Hassan and Hussein May Allah please them that they saw someone do wudu wrong, an old person. They didn't say to him, Haji Saab, you are six years old, you spend four months and you, you, know, you do wudu wrong. They said to him, Haji Saab, me and my brother, we think that our wudu is the best. Can you watch our wudu to make sure that who is the best person and tell us who is best. So both of them did wudu. And the Haji Saab said, both of you are the best, my wudu is wrong. So... We need to really learn how to correct people. As Imam Shafi says, that when you correct someone publicly, this is fadiha. This is disgrace. But when you, when you tell them in private, this is nasihat. Allah Ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah.